Hello everyone. Well, it's now Sunday the 16th of December 2018. Time for another Advent video. Now, the video you're about to see, it's an unboxing. Um, it wasn't scheduled, but I got this item a few days ago and I thought, well, I might as well use the opportunity to unbox it during my Advent video series. So it's from a supplier that I've bought from before. And here's a clue. It smells of the farmyard. So no doubt there'll be something wrong with it. There'll be parts missing. There'll be bits broken. It might not work. But fingers crossed, we might get a Christmas miracle when I unbox this vacuum cleaner. I say vacuum cleaner, and yes, this is a vacuum cleaner, but it is so much more than just a vacuum because it's at least a three-in-one. It's a dry vac, it's a wet vac, and it shampoos carpets. Also shampoos upholstery, so you could say it's a four-in-one, and I think it could clean hard floors as well. So it might be a five-in-one. So as usual, from this particular supplier that sometimes puts stuff on eBay, it's in a very tatty box. It smells of damp and manure. But it only cost me £24 plus about £6 postage. So I'm not too bothered. It's a jet and wash. And it's not actually made by Hoover. I think this is possibly made by a company called Thomas. You can still get Thomas vacuums. And in fact, you can get a Thomas machine that looks very like this even now. The main body of the machine is almost the same. It's got a few changes to the shampoo head. So if this thing's wrong with this, I could possibly get parts to fit the Thomas version. But hopefully, despite the poor packaging and after a bit of a wipe down, this should be okay. So, well, this is sealed up still, the carpet and floor nozzle. I've just noticed it's all plastic, so it won't have rusted anyway. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and it's a, a, a Wieselweg type head, whatever that, you know, it's, it looks pretty basic, but it's got that brand, brand logo on it. I don't know if you can quite see, just there. So just very basic carpet and floor head. Now this, hmm, let me think. I think this was one of the last, oh no, there was another one after this, a jet and, jet and wash. There was a couple, there was one with a stainless steel drum container and a plastic one. Oh yes, I've got, I've got a couple of those plastic bodied ones. They came on the pallet. Both of those don't work though. There's something I need to look at. This came before those. But now Hoover just offer a couple of upright carpet washers that are pretty bad. So here's a hose. You've got your suction control. Needs a bit of a clean. It's, it's been in storage for a long time, but it's unused as far as I know. Ah, uh, it does. So a bit of spider's cobweb there. It does do hard floors because here is the hard floor attachment that fits onto the fish tail nozzle. It's a similar sort of shape to the pneumatic George and Henry Wash nozzle. So you've got a squeegee as well as a brush and that will just slide on to clean hard floors. I can only see one wand so far. Ah, but it's telescopic. Wow. I don't think I did have this model, of course, back in the day. And when I had mine, I'm pretty sure it didn't have a telescopic wand. I'm hoping that this is the correct wand. Again, it needs a bit of a wipe. I'm sure, I hope it's, it looks telescopic. If I can <coughs> get it, it seems to be a telescopic wand because there's arrows on this. Well, we'll fiddle with that later. It is a telescopic wand, I just can't release it. Might need a bit of WD-40 on that. Yeah, just, just absolutely thrown in the box, really. Deary me. So here's the, uh, yeah, it's definitely unused because it's still got the little cable tie. So this is the main shampooing nozzle. Not great, this type of machine really for cleaning carpets 
you're much better off with um, an upright style that's got some agitation, either spin scrub brushes or revolving brushes or Rub Doctor's vibrating brushes. Hopefully this will have survived because it's quite robust, but it's absolutely jammed in this box. Oh, what a mess and what on, what on earth is that? Hang on, oh, it's, I think, well, <laughs> I'm hoping the bits that I'm, I've noticed I'm missing are inside the cleaner. Wow, look at that, filthy. This is Hoover. Cleanatex cleaning solution. But it's all a bit yucky, isn't it? I wonder if it's sealed. I'll just open it and see. Oh, it isn't. It doesn't have a seal on. I'll give it a sniff. Not much of an odour. No memories of any smell from that because I don't remember getting a bottle of that size when I got my jet and wash all those years ago. Well, it's not that old. Well, I've got the instruction book. Hoover Jet and Wash, so we'll know what should have been um, supplied with this. You know, see, see the uh, staples have gone rusty, so this this hasn't been stored correctly, has it? Lots of accessories which I'm missing, but as I said, hopefully those and the wheels are inside the cleaner. We've got a a bag that really is no use. It's, really, it's. Uh, it might be okay for an initial demo. You can still buy bags for this. It's very tatty, isn't it? And, oh dear, looks like something's been nibbling at that. But again, I can buy spares. Let's release the motor unit. Right, looks, looks, <laughs> promising so far and that's all very nice isn't it in there hopefully the motor won't have got any rust on it because it's been quite protected inside here some of these cleaners that are stored even if they're brand new if they're stored in damp conditions they'll have rust on them now right well these things in here look in better condition than the things that were in the box so We've got that, which I can't remember what that's for. I think it's something to do with the filter, the dry filter. That's all very nice. That's your, your long solution tube. That, that end is what you plug into the cleaner. So this has a pump, it's not gravity fed. It does have a pump. And there's the trigger. Here's a small nozzle. I think like a Pneumatic George, this will, will be good for upholstery and stairs because of this small nozzle, but it's hard work on carpets. That seems fine. So that will fit directly to the wand, uh, the handle, sorry, I believe. Or oh, does it? I think it does. And then you slide in. I won't show you completely, but that obviously slides into there, look your trigger and then they, this red part screws onto there and then you use use that to uh, release the solution. Crevice tool, medium length. That looks, it's sealed so hopefully all the wheels are in there. Upholstery tool, I'm not sure if we're supposed to get a dusting tool with this because there isn't one. Here's the clean water tank. Looks okay. Whoops. And underneath the clean water tank, oh, this is the filter. Right, so this is the dry filter. So for dry use, you put the bag in. You also fit the foam filter that I think I'll replace. And then on top of the foam filter, you put this paper. So I'll, I'll, I'll need to shop for some of these paper filters and I think that ring that I showed you earlier that's what secures the paper filter to the cage that surrounds the float valve now I don't know why and I hope I can get it out I don't know why the plugs tucked inside there 
it's all it all just needs a wipe but apparently you know it looks uh, doesn't look damaged so fingers crossed but it's getting it oh there we are I thought that, I thought I'd have trouble getting that out so yeah oh there's a date wheel there's a date wheel inside Let's see if I can see what it says. It's 02. It's 5. Month 5. So that's May 02. So it's 2002 by the looks of it. I don't think it's 92. No. I think it's 2002. Is it? Hmm. Could be. It is relatively recent. I don't think it's 92. I think they were still doing... Oh no, 92, they still would have had the Aquamaster and possibly the Aqua Jet by then. So I think this is 2002. So it could be, could be a candy era one. Do you know, Hoover in the UK are now owned by a Chinese company called Haier, H-A-I-R, is it E-H-O? I don't know how you pronounce it. Anyway, yeah, so we'll see what happens to Hoover with a new owner. A new Chinese owner. Is it going to be good or is it going to be bad, I wonder? Right, there's other pieces in here. There is some changes between this and the one I owned. I'm not sure what that bit's for. It'll all be made clear in the instructions. Whoops, that's one wheel. Two wheels. Three. It's only four, is it? Yes, there's only four wheels on this. Sure, the Aquamaster had five, didn't it? And uh, I think the Vax tub had five. We've also got some clips to secure the solution tube. Are they all the same? There's one, two, three. Ah, oh, they're not all the same. There's four large clips, four large ones to secure the solution tube to the hose and two small ones to secure it to the wand, which I still haven't been able to separate. Oh, Oh, right, there is a screw, which I think was the two screws, two screws that must have something to do with that piece. I'll check the instruction book. And we've got four. So apart from a wipe down, as long as this thing turns on and the pump works, I'll be pretty pleased for, what did I say it cost? Was it 24 pounds or something? It's not a collectible machine, you know, it's, um, I think they, you can put those in anyway. It's one I had and it's just one I'd like, would like to own. I will at one point, hopefully next year, fingers crossed folks, I will do a, a big comparison video of all my carpet washers. Well, oh dear, didn't like the sound of that, did you? I think that's in. Um, I might do one. I wouldn't be able to get all the carpet washers in one video, but I could do one of all the tub style carpet washers. So I could have the original Vax, the original Aquamaster, then I've got uh, the Aqua Jet. I've got another style of jet and wash, if I can get them working, this style of jet and wash. Uh, oh, we've got an Electrolux Twin Stream, Electrolux Master Lux. So I've got quite a lot of this style of cleaner that all work on a similar principle, of course, but. The original Vax and the Hoover Aquamaster are ones without a pump. Right. There we go, that's in. Is this one going to push down? There. Oh, I don't like that cracking noise. But anyway. Oh dear. <laughs> don't you... Hmm, looks all right. Hopefully I've uh, just not put that on. I probably didn't push that down, did I? very hard to do. Hang on. Just talk amongst yourself folks. Right, what I might do, put it out that way. You know there's always something isn't there eh? There's always summit. Oh that's not even in properly either. Right, well I'll fiddle with that off camera I think. You get the gist, it's got wheels. So, for dry use, excuse me. Well, I'll just shove the bag in, shall I? 
as I said, I'll go online. I don't think there'll be much, much trouble finding bags and filters for this. But as I said, there is a current model made by Thomson. I think it's Thomson or Tom Thomas. And it, I think it's virtually the same. It'll take the same bags. It'll take the same filters. So I'll be able to get... Now, which way does that bag go in? Well, hang on, let's have a look at these instructions. Yeah, it is slightly different. What's the date on these instructions? Uh, can't see a date. Just see if I've got all these bits. Yeah, I've got that. Yes, miracles will never cease. I have got all the bits. Didn't come with a dusting brush, but really this type of cleaner. I don't think many people would have used this style of cleaner as their main vacuum as well as a carpet washer. Do you? It's a bit inconvenient. Anyway, where does, how does the bag go on? I'm just thinking which way does the bag... Oh, it goes that way. Oh, so right here. It does, goes this way. This way on. With the collar the higher up, I think. So just pushes on. Just pushes on. Careful not to split the bag. I will do a demo of this, but I'll wait until I've got a new set of bags and filters and things. I don't know if that's going to really fit on properly either. It doesn't seem to want to... Oh, you've got to really press. I'm just worried about... Because this bag probably been damp and it's going to... I'll put my fingers through it before too long. But anyway, oh dear. Well, that's, <laughs> that's the bag. Here's the motor unit. I'll show you a bit about this in a minute. Oh, what? We don't know the wattage or anything yet, do we? So here's the little feed pipe that takes the shampoo from the clean water tank and pumps it through the tube to the nozzles. Hopefully it'll be fairly quiet this one because I can see some sound insulation around it. And what's this? Close, open. So you can take this off. I think it just pulls off. I don't know if I want to risk it. I'm sure it just pulls off. Dear me, let's have a look. Because I want to have a look, see if I can see the fan of the motor and see if that's um, gone rusty or not. Because we don't want a rusty fan, do we, folks? We don't. I think it just pulls off. Da -da -da -da. I'm sure it does come off because you need to be able to clean around the float valve uh, section L. Anyway, how, how are you doing? Hope you're sorted for Christmas. Hopefully you've got mostly all your Christmas shopping done by now. Nothing worse than going at the last minute trying to buy stuff, is there? Most people do stuff online these days, don't they? I know I do. Da -da -da. Assembly. Well, I... I can't be bothered, but I'm sure that comes just just showing it pulls off because there is a little filter. I won't I won't try and force it. There is a little black sponge filter that you can't see behind the float valve. You can just about see there. Can you see that little valve there? So that obviously raises up as the cleaner fills with liquid and cuts off the suction. Pretty pretty basic principle, but it works. I've been using that principle for a long time. So that seems fine and dandy. Well I'm not going to actually put uh, a load of dirt down but what I will do, oh dear hang on a minute, just had to, I just had my tripod on this as you can see it's uh, a little bit worse for wear, a bit nibbled isn't it? <gasps> oh my god there's some dead mouse in there! Ooh. No there isn't thanks, there isn't. This goes on first you see. So I think when you're using this as a shampooer, you'd leave this on, I think. I will check before I use it as a shampooer. But for dry use, you need to pop this on as well, you see. This, this is the paper bag, look. That's all it is, just the paper bag. And that goes over the top. I think it's a similar, my Electrolux Twin Stream, I think, does it like this. I think the Masterlux does as well. What a faff this is. But as I say, I can't see a lot of people 
having this as their only vacuum. I think that goes over there. Doesn't seem to want to, but oh, there we are. Yes, is it? It is a better system because I'm, I'm sure it's the uh, twin stream I've got, or it could be the Aqualux. It uses a rubber band, you know, like an elastic band, not a proper, you know, rubber band, but an elastic band, can you believe? Anyway, you get the gist. I'm sure if that was on properly, that would fit on. So this is for dry use. Oh, I've just seen what that thing's for. Hang on. I'll just pop. That's not in right, but you know. Oops. I think that just goes in like that. You've got the yeah, look. little bit scuffed. Look, I'm not bothered. If this turns on, I'll be happy with it. Um, I've just seen what this bit's for. So mine, my original one, which is probably a bit earlier than this, didn't definitely didn't have this. Two holes there, so that's obviously for this fits on. I don't know if it's that way or that way, but that's uh, a parking bracket by the looks. And if I don't put that on, it's going to lose suction because it's, there's two holes there in the tub. Oh, we can see the wattage now. If we can uh, look at the old rating sticker. So anyway, it's a Hoover model S6155001. The serial numbers, if we can date it from this, I'm not sure, but it's 37653821. 0224-59330. It's, ah, it's 100, well, 1,250 watt PCEE. Pmax is 1,500 watts. It's got a 30 watt pump with a four bar pressure pump. And it says the maximum liquid temperature is 30. So that's just basically cool water. Shouldn't really put hot or warm water in this. I suppose it'd be alright if you put warm in, but certainly not hot, according to this. So, nothing much more to show you, apart from we'll turn it on. I'll show you the little dial at the front. You've also got, oh, there's a pump on light there as well. That's handy to have, isn't it? Not that you, you'd probably know when the pump was going, because it does make a more bit of a noise, the pump, I think. Okay then, here we go. It's plugged in. I'm going to risk turning it on near the machine. So you basically use this dial to turn the machine on. So one way will be suction only. And there's a setting for pump only and a setting for suction and pump. So let's turn it to suction only. Oh, <laughs> that doesn't bode well. Unless it only goes one way. Now I think it does, it should go both ways. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> oh. mm. Does smell a bit electrically burning smell. Oh, that might dissipate you know with use it could be because it's new i shouldn't run the pump you should never really run the pump unless there's water pumping through it that's a little bit stiff what i might do before i use it properly i'll take the top off get some of that contact spray cleaner to spray all around the switches and everything um but yeah it's a bit mm, it's a bit smelly that not too keen on that sort of burning smell i know you know new vacuums can smell a bit at first it sounds quiet enough um, certainly it's not too bad for noise but yeah that is quite stiff But it sounds okay, sounds okay, sounds how I, how I remembered it. This is where you'd actually plug in your solution tube. Now I'll have to get a pair of scissors to do that. So, so this is basically set up for dry use. 
and obviously you'd attach you'd attach the wand now this is the that's the way that that goes in and obviously it must go that way because that part there on the wand is what you'd slide into the uh, doobery thing you know the bracket but for the life of me I can't work out how to pull this out here oh there we go oh that's it there we are there we go then that goes on there oh that's better yeah Well, as it's Christmas, I thought I might as well give you a quick look at the shampooing function and also to check that it works. So I fitted the uh, parking bracket on the back. I've taken out the dust bag and the next thing to do, I've filled the tank. I've put a little bit of water in and some Vax solution. I'm not using the Hoover stuff yet. So I'll put the tank inside the recovery bucket okay so the solution tank goes in the recovery tank with this groove towards the front where the hose goes in i haven't filled it to the top just for a quick test and you don't have any sort of filter so you remove the filters there still is the little sponge filter that you can't quite see so there's some sort of filtration and you've got to of course ensure that this tube here is actually in the solution and you don't trap it so and again you should do this when it's unplugged which I have made sure I'll take that ring off we don't want that on there so pop that is that going to go in hang on Just double check it's in the water no it wasn't easily done it was in the middle there we go that should be in the water now line it up close it well we've already got the hose attached what I'm going to do first is we'll see what it's like with the upholstery nozzle the shampooing nozzle so if this all works as it should I'll be quite happy with this let's move that out the way and we now need to clip the solution hose to the suction hose okay so i've put the four larger clips onto the solution tube a bit tricky to get on but once they're on you shouldn't have to take them off they do move up and down quite freely which i'll need to do when they're actually clipped to the hose because you need to make sure they're nicely evenly spaced so the first thing i'm going to do is plug the black end here into the machine so it just pushes in with a click and that's securely in place and when we want to release it you just press the white button and that will pop out and now i need to clip the solution tube what a faff this is <laughs> so much easier with an upright style carpet washer but you know this was the sort of machine we had from the 80s when Vax, I think Vax were pioneers with this type of machine in the early 80s. Until, of course, the upright style carpet washers came in. I think it was probably the, the early 90s it started appearing. So, certainly in the UK, our first upright carpet washer was a Hoover brush and wash. I think it was an American import just like your Hoover Steam Vax, if you're watching, you know, the original Steam Vax. And we had that machine for a long time and it cleaned up an awful lot of dog naughties. We bred puppies at the time, so you can imagine how much wee wee went into it. It was constantly on guard. Um, hang on, I'm just going to lean over and get this. So now we've got to slide the trigger directly onto the nozzle if i can hang on don't break anything now it's been very good so far All right that's the nice secure fit that's the trigger 
and then we've got to attach this it's a little sort of bayonet type fitting might have been easier to do it before I put it on but anyway yes yeah, yeah, hang on it's it is tricky this as I say well when if people did have this as their only vacuum I suppose you wouldn't be doing this all the time most of the time it would just be set up for dry vacuuming and then they'd probably have to look at the instructions to work out how on earth they set it up for shampooing that seems to be on so we've got everything set up for upholstery cleaning there was a little accident Daisy did earlier I think I'll need to go over that but uh, we'll just try it out it might take a few seconds for the water to pump through it should fingers crossed the solution should spray out of that jet there I think the first thing I'm going to do is prime the pump because this won't have had any liquid through it or if it has it's a long long time ago maybe at the factory it was tested with some liquid in so I'm just going to turn the pump on only we'll hear the pump making quite a racket and then hopefully when I squeeze the trigger it'll start pumping the solution through fingers crossed okay I'm gonna to have to turn it twice well hopefully hmm oh dear <laughs> do you know what the pump is working we can hear it perhaps I haven't well no that's in the water now I had this problem with another pump operated vacuum which I still haven't fixed an Electrolux Master Lux the pump and that was supposed to be new the pump didn't work in that either right I don't know if I've done anything wrong we'll try it again Well, that seems, <laughs> by turning on the suction motor as well, that does seem to have made a difference, doesn't, didn't it? So let's try it again. Ah, oh, fantastic. It is now pumping solution out of the nozzle. Okay, I better suck this water up now. So I'll turn it to pump and suction. Well that seems to work fine, so I'm going to just fit the wand now and the main fishtail nozzle. Got a bit caught up, that's the trouble with this sort of machine. You know the solution tubes often get tangled up and what a palaver as they say. Hang on, that'll do. So before I release this, I need to release the pressure because sometimes you can get a bit of a shock. So I'm just going to squeeze the trigger. We might get some solution coming out a little bit. That's just release the pressure. So when I take this off, it's not going to squirt everywhere. Just pull that out. There we are. I've fitted the nozzle to the ones and I've fitted the two smaller clips. There's one there, look, and the other one higher up. And we can put the handle into there and that needs to go onto there now there we are so it fits onto the wand and then this again bayonet fitting there we are so now hopefully it'll take a, a second or two for the solution to pump through this part of the tube
This is the mat that we step on when we enter the house with our shoes on and it's also the mat that the dogs walk over after they've been in the garden. So as you can imagine, it's always the dirtiest bit of carpet we've got. Now the bit I've just shown you, the small area I've done in front, this is the entrance to my living room. This also gets quite grubby, so it's probably helped freshen that out. But this is probably where we might see a bit of a difference. And that's a gray mat, but we might see it brightening a little bit. So let's try it. you can see the problem with this mat it's very light and you can see the suction it was just pulling it in so what I might do with this now it's okay I seem to be able to clean this okay with my upright carpet washers but with this Hoover jet and wash hang on let's just release the pressure I think oops, it's made a little it's, it's dribbled on the mat never mind let's pop that to one side it's gonna take a little bit longer but I might as well use up the solution in the tank. Don't want to waste it, so I might as well do this mat. Needs cleaning, well, really every week, but every couple of weeks. But it does trap a lot of the dirt, which is what this sort of mat is for. So I'm going to put on the small nozzle. Trying to do it, it's, it's a fiddly thing to do though. It is fiddly. But it seems to work. I think the water in the dirty water tank will be quite dirty, to be honest, especially after I've done this mat. There we are, that's on. Well, that certainly looks a bit better. I haven't done it properly because I've run out of solution. I didn't fill the tank all the way. I'll do the job later, but let's see how dirty the water is from just this little area. There we go. Lift out the clean water tank. There's a little bit of water left in there. I always find that's the case with this sort of machine. The George does it as well. It always leaves a little bit in the bottom, unless you sort of tilt the machine a bit when you're using it. Ugh. Well. Look at that, folks. That's pretty dirty, isn't it? I thought it would be. Being in winter, of course, we get more muck trailed in onto this mat. So that's pretty good for that small area. I've got all that muck out. Well, there you go. That's the end of today's Advent video. I'm really pretty pleased with this. It's better than I remembered it, actually. It's not a bad machine, but then it's not really a Hoover. But yeah, my initial reaction to this was oh dear I've got another lemon but it's turned out to be okay so I'm really pleased with this I will be using this more next year of course well in the new year I'm gonna have a really good spring clean so a lot of my cleaning arsenal will be out of its boxes so you'll see a lot more videos using this sort of machine because my stairs need doing my upholstery needs doing my whole house really needs a good spring clean and with all the carpet washers and vacuum cleaners I've got 
I think I'll have fun trying them all out again. And of course, you can join me and see the results if you care to. Thanks for watching. Tune in tomorrow for another Advent video. Same time, same place. Bye for now.